everyone, do you like my look? Because this is totally how I look when I teach VIP Kid. So um, my makeup has been done for a while, but I just got finished teaching VIP Kid. So I'm finishing my hair and I thought I would talk books. So this is kind of an update of what I've read over the weekend. Um, so I finished up Between Two Worlds by Tyler Henry, which um, I read with uh, Sarah from Your True Shelf. And that was our first buddy read together. The book was good. Okay, I'll talk about that in a second. But I think my favorite part was just getting to know Sarah better. I think whenever you talk to people on Boxer, you just get to know them at such a, a deeper level as compared to like just watching their YouTube videos. So that honestly is my favorite part of booktube, um, just getting to chat it up with people on Voxer. And it was really fun to do that with Sarah. So um, that book is basically about this famous um, American psychic who I've never heard of before. So, you know, apparently I'm up on things. And um, he has a show apparently, but I don't pay attention to TV, where um, he works with celebrities and he will do like readings with them or whatever and um, serve as a medium. And um, so that book was kind of about his like childhood and um, some experiences that he had that um, made him realize that he had a special gift. And then it talked through just a little bit about him like getting on the show and stuff like that. And then the last chapter was kind of a QA. and a um, So I love books about psychics. And um, one of the hard things for me is that I'm never sure if they're real or fake until I read the book. So um, if you guys have any recommendations for psychic books that you feel like are legit, put them in the comments because like I don't want to have to read all the books to um decide like oh actually this one was fake and I just wasted my whole time reading this book so yeah let me know um I really did like the book but like I said I enjoyed more just the experience of doing a buddy read with it um let's see what else oh today is the first day of school by the way like kind of um it's the start of second semester but we have new students joining <clears throat> and I've changed so much about what I'm doing compared to last semester. So I think it will be really fun to have a fresh start. And like I woke up this morning like singing the thing, well, kind of chanting the thing from Nemo where it's like, first day of school, first day of school. So excited. Okay. The next book that I read, I actually got from the library and I already returned it. Um, But I ended up purchasing a copy for myself because I loved it so much. And I don't remember what it's called, but I will just put a picture of it in this video. And um, basically, it is like the book of my dream life, which is um, that um, it's all these authors. Honestly, a lot of them, I did not know who they were. Um, but you basically get to go inside their house and you get to see their whole library set up. And then you get to see like individually, not all the shelves, but some of the shelves they take pictures of. And then there's the author um, interview, which kind of reminds me of like the New York Times by the book sort of thing. It's not that, but it's kind of asking similar questions. Um, it's asking them like how often do they rearrange their books, which I can't remember who it was because I think it was the author that I hadn't heard of before. But he was basically saying how he's always reorganizing them. And I was like, I feel so seen. Like, yes, me too. Um, hey, Dad, what do you think of my book? Wow, <laughs> that is really neat. I wish the heck I had some, a book like that that I could look into people's homes and look at their library books. Wow. <laughs> By the way, I have a Ruth Bader Ginsburg shirt on today. Um, okay. Um, and then it would like show images of their top 10 favorite books ever or most influential books um and it was just really cool to snoop because <laughs> i just love that so much so i would definitely recommend that book and then the other book that i read recently i'm gonna have to stop doing my hair because things are about to get serious 
Um, this book is called Reading Quirks, Weird Things That Bookish Nerds Do, and it's actually like created by an independent bookstore, so I had to go specifically to that independent bookstore to buy it because I needed this in my life. So let's just start. I apologize, I'm going to read all this to you, but it's just because it made me feel so seen and I was like already laughing and like in love with this book when this started. So reading Quirks is a work of nonfiction. You have in your hands an anthropological study of a strange and far away raging human tribe, a tribe that gets from reading of books the kind of happiness that other people derive from wrestling alligators. Everything in these pages is true. More than that, it's scientifically true. We read in the tub, on the toilet, in the emergency room, while showering or brushing our teeth, standing in line at the post office, waiting for the subway, the plane, the bus. Oh, it's raining? While walking the dog, riding a bike, swaying in a shady hammock. We agree with Borges, I know that's not how you say it, that heaven must be something like a library. We secretly dog ear pages and feel bad about ourselves afterwards. We spot someone, when we spot someone with a book, we'll strain our necks trying to get a glimpse of the cover. Yes, don't read Kindles because I can't see what you're reading. Our way of prepping for the apocalypse is to stockpile books or a pandemic. And surely the hardest part of packing for a trip is deciding which books to take. Yes. St uh, stalked as we are by the ever-present existential dread that someday, somewhere, we'll, be ourselves, we'll find ourselves without anything to read. It is not that there, we're antisocial. Far from it. It's just that we often prefer to be silently social with people on the page who are, let's face it, usually more interesting and entertaining than the fresh blood versions. Um, I think I will not read the rest, but, whoa, I love this book so, so much. And actually, uh, reading the intro reminded me that something else that I wanted to tell you was actually part of the book before this one and not this one. So rewind a second for the book that was before this where, um, they were photographing like, uh, famous author shelves. Um, basically the author was talking about being a babysitter, uh, when she was like a teenager or college student and how the first thing she would do after the parents left is like, go look on the bookshelves <laughs> and look like on the bedside table and look at all the places. And then she would raid the fridge and I was like, yes, that's exactly what I did. So if you have small children and have babysitters who love to read, watch out. Um, okay. But then this book, the rest of the book going back to where I was talking about is just a series of like four panel comics and um like I was literally just dying and I was at my family's house and I was reading this and they're just like you're kind of weird um so the first one it's so funny um basically they're talking about this they're like all just chatting and they're like oh yeah it's like the book of illusions by Paul Auster and then this dude's like I haven't read it and then this guy like storms out of the room. Sorry, I need to get my nails painted. And then um, he's like, 15 years lying on your shelf and you haven't even read it yet. Like, and then it says, if you borrow a book and you don't read it, karma will come after you. There's like the little summary. There's a summary at the bottom of each one. Um, and then there's this other one which actually happened to me the other day at the library. But there's like these two people like book browsing and um, this guy is like finding this book and this girl's like, that's my favorite book ever. And then she like gets really close and like grabs him. I love it because it's about as long as there's any humanity left in the world, there will always be art. It reads like a series of short stories all focused on this post-apocalyptic event and they're all connected to this one man. You have to read it! Uh, do I know you? Oh no, I did it again. I mean like, so many other ones that um, I just thought were so funny and like, totally like have thought that in my head or actually done that like I almost yelled at a lady at the library the other day what was she requesting now I can't remember what she was requesting but whatever it was I was like that is so good <laughs> like you're gonna love it place a hold on it anyway okay and then um the last book I'm reading now but only at nighttime, is the kiss quotient and I can 
I cannot even look at that. Oh my gosh. I just, it's upside down now. I can't even look at the cover. Just makes me feel some kind of way. I am loving that book. Whoever gave me warnings about it, listen, I really like it. <laughs> it's really, really good. And, um, it is just getting me super excited to have the COVID vaccine and just to have freedom again, to live my life, to hang out with people. And um, what else was I going to say about it? Oh, um, I think that Heather from Soggy Expat Book Nerd said that she heard somewhere or read somewhere that the next decade is going to be like the roaring 20s because we've basically been trapped in our houses for like a year and now it's going to be like 10 years of like extreme um social ability and just like we'll be hanging out with all the people and having like just so much fun and just like living life so fully because it's been kind of not taken away from us because um, I kind of disagree with all these people complaining about the pandemic because there are so many good things that have come out of it and I think we need to keep that in mind but like all of us have made sacrifices and <laughs> the end is in sight at least for me um, I hope that everyone gets the vaccine soon and also it's kind of like this cautious uh, end is in sight thing because you know that this could happen again like not to be a Debbie Downer I'm just saying like we're not as innocent as we were before, I guess. And um, anyway, but yeah, that book, I'm not even going to look at it. It's daytime. I need to work. I need to go to work. I need to not think about the stuff in that book. But it is good. I'm loving it. Okay, I'm going to finish straightening my, straightening my hair, eating breakfast. I made myself overnight oats um, because I was getting bored of hot oatmeal. And... I start work at 8.30, so I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for listening to me describe what I read this weekend, and I'll talk to you later. Bye!